Hey everyone, this is Scott from CertMedia.com, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to set up, configure, and how to use Loginizer. Loginizer is a premium plugin, kind of. It has a premium version, and it has the free version where you get some limited functionality. We'll be covering the free version, but that premium version will be right around the corner, as always. So, with Loginizer, it's first and foremost a brute force protection. For those of you who are unaware, brute force protection basically protects your website from getting constant attacks of users trying to guess your password. A brute force attack is when a bot or a user is basically sitting on your login page and trying a bunch of passwords on either a predefined list of known hacked passwords or randomly guessed passwords. It's typically found to that they're using active lists. So if you've ever been to the website, have I been pwned, you can put in your email address and it'll say, hey, whatever password you had for this account, it's been leaked and is associated with your email. So that's typically what they try to do. And then sometimes they're just lazy and they try to guess password, password one, password two, and so on and so forth. With Loginizer, it helps reduce those attacks. It's kind of like WordFence in the brute force protection part, but without all the extra stuff that WordFence includes. So when you install it, you get this nice little dashboard. It gives you some basic system information. You can close them by clicking this. Actually, it looks like the JS is not firing. But the file permissions option lists out what your files are and their current permission values. It gives you suggestions. So for instance, wp-config, it only suggests that it's 4444, which means it can't be written to. And then it also suggests that your HT access file is the same way. You can fix these yourself by just going into FileZilla or whatever FTP client you have and updating them. If you're on a cPanel host, you can also control it in there by choosing the file manager and using the set permission option. But these are not really core features to this plugin. In the free version, you get this nice brute force protection menu. So what this is, is it's a collection of logs at the, up here that will warn you of failed login attempts which is important in diagnosing if your website's being actively attacked. And most of the time you don't even need to be concerned with your website being actively attacked. Any active website is going to get brute forced. Any active website is going to have attempts for SQL injection, trying to test vulnerabilities. It's just the nature of WordPress websites because they're high value targets and there's so many of them. There's just automated attacks every day. And if there weren't, there wouldn't really be a need for something like WordFence or Loginizer in the first place. Under the brute force protection settings, this is where you can actually start to mess around with your settings to yield better performance gains. Uh, not performance gains, well, the performance of the brute force protection. So let me explain. Under this section, you have something called max retries. These are the maximum failed attempts before the user is logged out. They are given three retries and then they get a locked out time for 15 minutes. If you're on a website, maybe it's just your WooCommerce website and you sell and you do online orders, or maybe it's just your blog and you just go on there and you blog about your life and you're traveling or you're a tech blogger, so on and so forth. You typically can lower this in those situations. Most of us have our passwords saved in our browser and a lot of people use the same six passwords for everything that they own. Now, I don't recommend you do that, but you're going to. And if you don't have a two-factor authentication, like through WordFence or any other plugin, you're gonna wanna have some brute force protection in place. So you can leave it at the default max retries. You give yourself three retries before you're locked out. But then what you can do is you can lower the number of max lockouts. So what happens is, is the user fails three times in 15 minutes, so then they get locked out for 15 minutes. And if they do this five times, so where they get locked out five times by default, they get locked out for 24 hours. That means you're effectively giving yourself 15 incorrect guesses over the span of about an hour and 15 minutes to get logged in. Most users do not need that many. Most users already have their passwords saved, so you can lower this. You could give yourself, say, three retries, but only give yourself two max lockout times. So if you guess your password incorrectly six times in a 30 minute period, you are now locked out for 24 hours. And you can further extend this to a longer period. So it's default of 24 hours, but if you really wanna 
annoy a bot, you could set it to something like 196 hours, just any number that's longer. You could, in theory, set it to 999999, and you're constantly locked out. I don't recommend doing that because it'll make getting back in a little bit more difficult. And you can whitelist your IP address, but that's not foolproof if you're on your mobile device. So I set it to something reasonable, say 24 hours. And as always, if you're the website owner, you can just de disable the plugin and this solution will no longer work. So 24 hours, you get 24 hour reset and you could choose to get an email notification or not. Zero notifications is honestly ideal to not annoy you with useless emails. Finally, you have the blacklist IP address and whitelist IP address functionality. This allows you to either blacklist an IP address that's constantly brute forcing you. You can also choose to blacklist a range. Avoid doing your own IP address and don't set it to something that's local. But what you can do is you can view your log information, see who's getting locked out. And if you're using Cloudflare, you could even take that IP address and block it in Cloudflare, which would just stop them from hitting your server altogether to reduce server resources. And then you could choose to just include them in your blacklist here. I would just put them in your Cloudflare account to reduce your usage. And then the one thing I would do is make sure you whitelist your IP address. Um, if you don't whitelist your IP address, at least your home, you're gonna just be asking yourself for problems if you forget your password one day. If you do forget your password and you get locked out, your, real, your really only option here is to disable the plugin altogether. And I I wouldn't I would I would not there's not really a good reason to not whitelist your IP address. I would not whitelist every IP address that you access it from. For instance, if you go down to the coffee shop once a week and that's where you work out of for four hours a day, don't whitelist that IP address, but whitelist your home IP address and that's probably sufficient for most users. The premium version does give you extra features, an RE capture, you can rename your login page, so on and so forth. And you get an email for two-factor authentication and access to the Google Authenticator app, if that's how you wish to validate. But either way, it's a great plugin. It does its job quite well. If you set your restrictions on the brute force settings to be lower, you're going to be punishing those bots, and then you can take their information and plug them into your Cloudflare account to block them altogether and to reduce your server resources. Personally, I use this plugin on implementations where I need just basic brute force protection, but the client doesn't want to use something like WordFence. And part of the reason people don't like to use WordFence is it's inherently very bulky. It is a bulky application to run in very large environments. And honestly, Loganizer does the job very well with a lot less resource usage. The only downside is you obviously don't get the scanner and you don't get that real-time protection. But in those types of scales, they tend to have something like Cloudflare Pro where they have a web application firewall protecting them against known vulnerabilities. If you have any questions about Loganizer and its settings, you can always ask in the comments below and I will try to help you out. Otherwise, make sure to like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.